welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. I don't even have my headset on. Oh, no headphones today. Uh, no headphones. And as you can see, there's a, at first there was three and we're missing one. Down to two. He has prior engagement. He's in the middle of a basketball tournament. So Todd has a basketball game today at Woburn High. Good He's luck. coaching. So traffic wise, he could for reasons traffic and you know the game's at five, so he couldn't be here. But it's okay. We hold it down. He'll be back. He'll be back next week to represent for the light skinned community. Um <laughs> She's back from Florida. No tan though. Uh, Back from Florida and no tan. That's a shame. That that is a shame. I, well, at least you weren't in Chicago for the All Star Game, where it was freezing out there. But it, it looked like it was a fun weekend out there in Chicago. A lot of things went on. A lot of controversies. But first, we're gonna start with Saturday night. And Saturday night, we'll start with the Skills Challenge. Right. The and. Now, I mind you, with the skills challenge, we're talking about shooting, passing, and even ball handling. Like, this is a lot that's going into this. And for some reason, I don't know when was the last time a guard won this challenge. Right. Because uh, I think the past the past couple years, it's been big men that, that have won this challenge. And, you know, Bam Adebayo, to many surprise, mm -hmm. he won it. And I don't think anybody had... <laughs> I don't think anybody thought Bam out of bio was going to win it. Well, event it all came down to the final shot for Bam. Really. It really did. You know, these both of the men, they kept going. We didn't know who was going to win, but Bam at the end of the day, he showed out. Yeah, he did, but it's, you know, if you look at it, he's not really a guy that shoots any a lot of threes for right. the Miami Heat. It was his third attempt from the three-point line. And to give him this win. Yeah, so it was it was interesting. To Jason Tatum couldn't defend his title, but you know, the finals was DeMontis Sabonis. Mm -hmm. Two basically two power forward slash centers in it. And this is just the evolution of the game because the NBA is going to positionless. It's a lot it's a whole lot of positionless because right. everybody could do so much, especially the big man and for you for to see the two guys are like 6'10 or 6'11, close to seven feet that are that were in the finals. It just shows you how the game has expanded because mm -hmm. at some point you would never, coaches would like, if you were you a big man. You never believe it. <laughs> yeah, if you were a big man, you're not even dribbling the ball. Go in the paint and just <laughs> stay in the paint. But all right, so let me give you some of the past winners. All right, the last guard to win it, okay, was Spencer Dinwiddie in 2018. But, but here are some of the past winners. Jason Tatum, you know, he's considered forward guard. Spencer Dinwiddie, he's a national point guard. Kristaps Porzingis in 2017. Okay. Carl Anthony Towns in 2016. Patrick Beverly, 2015. Damian Lillard won it back to back 2014, 2013. Uh, 2012 was Tony Parker. 2011, Steph Curry. Okay, so, you know, mainly guards been winning it, but we've got a, we got, what is it? For the, Three out of the past six years, it's been three out of the past four years. Mm -hmm. It's been a big man. So, the evolution of basketball. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I like it though. I like it. This is, it's good for the game. It's good. It, it's it good helps. for the game. It's also good for potential other athletes to come to finally play in the All Star. Mm -hmm. It's shaking things up. Most definitely. I got my headphones back on now. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, and also, Bam, you know, at the end of the, you know, winning this, he wanted to devote it to his mom, especially because, you know, he basically said that she's made his house a home and he's always been so supportive. So it was just nice to see that he's. Everybody got to do it for mama. Right. Yeah, you because know, my, my, mama is the foundation to everything. So congratulations to Bam for that. You know, Jason Tatum, he could have went back to back. He would have been the first person to do it since. Dame Lillard did it back in 2013 and 2014, but he said he was um, he said he wants to win two of these before he 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 doesn't participate in it no more. So maybe he'll be back next year. Maybe we'll see. All right, the three point contest. This was the three point contest has become the premier event for Saturday night. We'll talk about the dunk contest in a minute, but the three point contest has really become what the event that everyone comes out to see, and there were. Some great three-point shooters in here, but, mm -hmm. you know, Buddy Hield, 
He put up 27 points in the final round. He had 27 in the first round, too. Right. So, and and it was crazy, too, because I think it was 20, I think Devin Booker in the first round had 27 or 26, and Mm -hmm. I can't even pronounce the guy from Washington. There was his name. I I don't even, (laughs) I can't pronounce his name. The the Euro the Euro guy he was a surprise for a lot of people especially for me because I honestly I didn't know I've never seen him on the court before he probably has got minutes I just never noticed but that was the first time I ever actually saw him yeah and you know what's unique about this also is that um, he he grew up in the Bahamas Mm -hmm. and his mom always told him that he couldn't go to the basketball court because of just the violence that's happening around the park yeah so what happened is that he constructed a piece of plywood in a plastic crate where he would practice playing ball every day and also they added a they added an actual three-point shot Mm -hmm. the gate the mount uh it was like a mountain dude three-point shot that was a new a new trickle that they added to that i thought it was pretty cool because these guys these guys nowadays they have their range is so crazy so they can shoot you know you got guys taking two steps in front of half courts and they shoot Mm -hmm. it like a routine shot so the that mountain dude three-point shot was uh, i I like what they did but you know devin booker he put up a he put he put up a show too he put up show and for buddy hill they can't it literally came down to the last shot Mm -hmm. he, he to to get that victory and i think you know, this whole All Star Weekend was commemorated for Kobe, and as Buddy Hill said, Kobe was one of his fav- his favorite players growing up. And you know, that's kind of like for him to hit that last shot at the buzzer too. Mm-hmm. It was like, huh, that's pretty. Brought it home. Yeah, that, that's something I'm sure Kobe Kobe would be and proud of. Was nice, yeah. I mean, there was so many performances from Jennifer Hutchins of just you know not forgetting Kobe yeah. throughout this moment. Yeah. So, so Buddy Hill is the 2020 three point champ I don't know during the regular season I, he only plays well against the Celtics I, every time I every time I see him he just doesn't do well against any other team but when he plays against the Celtics he puts up 30 40 points mm-hmm. that, that makes absolutely no sense to me but whatever all right <laughs> now we are going to go to the robbery of the night the when, robbery. I, when I talk about highway robbery this was highway ro- Hey, why? Why do you think so? Just to get your. I'm not saying it's not, but he jumped over a guy that was seven foot five. Right. There's no that, that score should be no lower than a 49. There's there's mm-hmm. there's no there's absolutely no reason that he should he got uh he got the score he did. But if you jumped over a guy seven foot five, and people are saying he they should dock points because he skid his head, he didn't clear him. And remind <laughs> you, he did five straight dunks to get the perfect score of 50. Um, and also, this is not his first time. Yeah, that's the second. This, this is, is the second time. And he even said from him losing that he most like, he's not going to play in, in this again. I, he, don't, he don't need to participate in it again. He showed everybody the – he showed some new dunks. But I, my thing with this, all right, they both put on a show, but – I think Derek Jones Jr. He just, you know, he was just showing us all the different ways that he could go between the legs, and I was just like, okay, it's cool. And like the dunk, the dunks were good. The, don't get me wrong, the dunks were great, but it's just there was no really. I was like, okay, between the legs, jump over someone between the legs, throw it off the glass between the legs. Now the three, the 180 or 360 tomahawk he did between the legs. Now that one, that one, if that one, that that one was tough, but I just think, me personally, I think Aaron Gordon had more creative and creative dunks and a variety of dunks. Right. And also, we gotta look at Dwayne Wade. There was some, uh, there was some scandal going on here because you can't have a former teammate be on the panel. Mm. That, that, yeah. That. Even rapper uh, Common, he said that it should have been tied at some point and. The, yeah, they all agreed. They all they all said they were gonna vote to have it end in a tie. But someone voted. I mean, it's a eyeballs, common so denominator. But <laughs> the fact, but the fact that they were they agreed to that is a problem in itself. You can't you can't have a tie in the dunk contest. Somebody got to mm-hmm. win. Grant Derek Jones Jr. won. But this is like, so I put it like this: Aaron Gordon won the popular vote. Mm. Derek Jones Jr. won the Electoral College. No doubt. That was basically it. Because I take what I take from dunk contests on scoring is you got to look at the reaction from the folks. And if you look at the reaction 
from not only his peers but from the fans after he jumped over Taco compared to the reaction from right. when he tried to do the windmill from the free throw line. It just... <laughs> You gotta look. You have to see, like, what happened the audience seen before, and what is he doing different, and what does he bring to the court yeah. that's changing and evolving basketball altogether. Yeah. Um, and he did that. And the fact that he was in the dunk contest at in 2016, and now it's 2020, and he basically should have two trophies by now. Yeah. And he should. <laughs> and also the 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 dunk from the free throw line that Derek Jones Jr. did. We have seen it. The, Zach Levine did it in 2016, and he actually jumped on the. He jumped. I think he was actually on the free throw line when he did it. And so I, that you know that right. that kind of took a little thing away. But if they would have if they would have asked me for some advice, if they wanted to really win it, all they had to do was do a 720. You do a 720, you you're getting tens nonstop. That's it. Tens game all day. game over. But I mean, but then we have this highway robbery. Dwayne Wade is the common denominator out of this and i think i think he was just hating on the light-skinned guy that's what it was that's what it was am i wrong <laughs> the voting did not go on his his way hey I'm, I'm just saying you, you look Dwayne wade and derrick jones jr they both little they, they both got a little they both the same shade mm. so he's okay i'm telling you it's a <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's go on to the All-Star game, which Team LeBron won the All-Star game. So LeBron close. since – Yeah, this was a close one too. Close, uh, close, close. Since this inception, LeBron's 3-0 and since they started this All-Star style of picking your, picking your team, picking your teammates. Okay. LeBron's 3-0. and uh, This was – you know, I didn't like this whole starting over each quarter. I thought, I thought it was dumb. I was just, just keep the scores – you know, don't go back to zero after each quarter. I know they were, they were doing it for charity and stuff. Whoever wins each quarter, but you could you could monitor that after each quarter. You're like, okay, without having to go back to zero, you could you could know who won each quarter as the game flow. You didn't have to just start at zero. And and the first three quarters, I was half asleep. I'm not gonna lie to you. Really? Yeah, I was half asleep. It was okay. Well, first off, the game was. It ended 157 to 155. That's how close we're talking about. A lot of people took to Twitter, fans, audience members, saying that they actually liked the new format for the NBA of how this was going and that the, the price of the charity was $100,000 to give, which I think is amazing. But for some people, they thought the game was more exciting. In the fourth, in the fourth quarter, yeah. Yeah. And the first three quarters, they were they – were, Okay, so let's put it in perspective. The first three quarters, there were 49 dunks in the first three quarters. I think there was one or two in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Like, they were just they were just out there playing Matador defense, letting them do whatever. Letting each, like, they just didn't – they weren't playing that hard the first three quarters. And then, you know, we get to, we get to the fourth quarter, and you're like, okay, we got to get to 157. And I think Team Giannis only had, like, 24 points to go because they was up to 133 mm -hmm. to, like, 124. And then you, you you saw the defense picked up. You, you, I'll describe that as uh, that was a typical pickup game at your local y, YMCA. The way it was sloppy, all the arguing with the referee. That's you go to any pickup game at any court. That's how it is right there, and that's what it looked like. And people loved it. You have to. I mean, it's that at this level, and especially how many people are coming to just come see this game. I mean, yeah. so many people are in the house from celebrities, yeah. Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, uh, Queen Latifah, uh, Spike Lee, you know. Yeah. yeah, they definitely, yeah, but they definitely put up, uh, put on a show in the fourth quarter. And, you know, <laughs> again, you got to look. <laughs> so I think the red, there probably was like three or four foul calls in the first three quarters. I think there was 21. Foul, foul calls wow. in the fourth quarter, and I, I, I hated the way the game ended. You, you can't, okay. you can't end it on a, you can't end a pickup game on a free throw. You sp so, do you think Team LeBron should have won then? Uh, I mean, they won. So, but, but I mean, do you think they should have? I didn't, they, they would. So I don't. I can't say. Do I think they should have won? They won. Well, I didn't know but, because you said about the calls no, and no, no, no. How I, the game is set up. Oh no, no, no. I just yeah. had a problem with it ending on a free throw. I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, 
Kyle Lowry fouled him, but I don't think they should have shot two free throws from that. I think you just – any pickup game, if that happens, check ball, let's go, you know. But this, it was it, – it just felt weird, like, it, for it to end on a free throw, especially the, especially the way they were playing in that fourth quarter. It was just like – we just had this great fourth quarter, and this is our ending, a, a, a free throw. Mm-hmm. So – it's uh, they, they they need to change that a little bit. Now, some people were suggesting that if they have a problem with it being a if it's a non-shooting foul for them to shoot free throws, then it should not happen. And then some people saying if it's a shooting foul, perfectly fine. But non-shooting foul, me personally, I think you just check it up. <laughs> check it up. Check it up. Yeah, just check it up. Do how you do it in the playground because it's it, it was I don't know. I, it, do it how you do it. <laughs> Yeah, just do it how you do in the play. That's basically what they were doing out there. Uh, I, I just don't know. I mean, would you change? What would you change if if you were commissioner about these things? I think or it's would, fine. I mean, I like the format. I liked how it, it, I thought it was more exciting. But did you? But did you like how it ended on free throws though? Yes and no. <laughs> uh, in between, I like. I understand where you're coming from. At the same time. It is, I mean, a free throw, we've always been taught that it is free and depending. You can't end a game like that. <laughs> you, can't, you can't end games like that in free throw. There's, you can't, pick up basketball does not end in free throws. Doesn't. Any court around the country, pick up basketball does not end in free throws. And, yeah, they, they, they need to do something different about that. I mean, maybe next year it would be like whoever's up one, if they got one, it's 156, 155. Or 157, 156, you got to win by two. They'll put those type of rules in there. But also, this format, they got this idea, you know, they got this idea from Ice Cube, but they don't want to credit it because Ice Cube made a comment saying, where, where's, uh, when's he going to get his invoice? Because <laughs> this is kind of like the big three. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, big three. Yeah. Except, you know, they got the first half target scores 20. They play up to 50. Mm-hmm. The tw- when you're the first team to 25 is halftime and then 50. So they're, you know, the NBA is kind of, they see what Ice Cube's doing and they try to steal it and not give credit, but you kind of have to give credit to Ice Cube. And, credit is due. Yeah, and, give, and let him come in and change some things. Watch next year. They might have a, they might, they might steal another idea that the big three have of challenging someone one on one or ISO. So, in some ways, I mean, at least it's kind of flattering, and I guess because now the NBA is acknowledging the big three and what they are doing and what Ice Cube is doing. So, if you look at that point, but yeah, give him credit. They just need to hop on board because Ice Cube is a big NBA fan, and his big three have has so many former players, Hall of Fame players involved in it. It's, I mean, it's a, it's only a matter of time till they collaborate. But I mean, you you need to get on it now because he's he's being a trendsetter and kind of stealing from you stealing from him. He's stealing his ideas, and you're not giving credit. So you know. Yeah, as he said in one of his songs, they need to bow down. <laughs> give, give him, give that man credit, man. Give you gotta give Ice Cube credit for some of the things he's done. And you know, the big three has really been a, a big hit for a lot of people. Hmm. All right, All Star Game MVP Kawhi Leonard, the first ever winner of the Kobe Bryant MVP trophy. They announced that they were naming that trophy after Kobe Bryant. Sat, I believe, I believe it was Saturday or Sunday. They made that. Sunday. The yeah, commissioner Adam Silver made that announcement, which was, I think, that was a great gesture, and I think that was another reason why these guys were going, were playing so hard in that fourth quarter because they wanted to be the first they to know. to win. I mean, I know LeBron wanted to be the first. You could see when he took that crazy three-pointer to try to end it <laughs> from like half court but I, this, this was that I think that was a great gesture by Adam, Adam Silver no it was and you know Leonard at the end he said it means a lot to me words can't even explain I want to thank Kobe for everything he's done for me all the long talks and workouts this one is for him yeah and you know he's a Southern California guy so you know though all, a lot of those guys that are in the league right now Westbrook James Harden Kobe was the person that they pretty much grew up watching out there mm-hmm. in su- in Southern California, so it means a little more special to them just because they 
they seen it firsthand. Right. And Kobe, you know, Kobe, grew, you know, they were watching Kobe growing up. But also Kobe was looking at them, too, if you look at that, because they're saying these are the guys that are coming up and doing amazing things also. Yeah. And I know that Kobe continued to look at Harden, especially just to see what he's done in Houston. Yeah, I think Kobe, I think Kobe one time said he went to watch, he went to watch Westbrook and Harden mm -hmm. and, and all them when they were in high school. Right. So he kind of, he said he, he knew th those guys were would do it would be so, would do something special when they got to the league and and it was great and it's just great just to see just to see that happen and it was you know the progress progress so congratulations to Kawhi Leonard now he's adding to his resume all he needs <laughs> all all he literally needs now is a regular season MVP trophy mm. and we could just put him in in the Hall of Fame all right because he's right now he's the way he's going is going to be first ballot Hall of Fame just because of the right. his accolades, two times finals MVP, I think two times defensive player of the year, uh, uh, five-time All-Star, so I believe it's five times. So he has first-team All-NBA. He has all these accolades. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if he, wins a, <laughs> if he wins a championship with the Clippers after getting one for Toronto and he's finals MVP, a serious conversation has has to be made about him being right as one of the goats of basketball. A serious conversation if he pulls it off, because I mean, yeah. it'll be you brought the first to a team in Canada that never made it to the finals before, and then you'll bring one to the little brother <laughs> of the Lakers, and mm -hmm. I mean that's just you if know. If he you, gets the job done, yeah, then a conversation needs to be taking place. Yeah, if. That's a big if. Possibility. Well, I mean, they, I, they, 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 they will be fine. They're fine right now. So I think when, when the playoff comes comes around, we'll see. But yeah, this is it's. Uh, he's got, he's, he's having quite the career. Mm -hmm. All right. Also during All Star Weekend, they announced the Hall of Fame class of 2020, headlined by probably three of the greatest at their position, Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, and Tim Duncan, and also WNBA All-Star Tamika Catchings, one of the greatest female basketball players ever. I think this, those four right there, that is quite the group to get in. Right. For, for those four, especially for each that, for what those, for all of them, what they've done to the game and what they've done to their positions is right. great. And also, Eddie Sutton, head coach, he was uh, mm -hmm. co national coach of the year, two-time NBA champ, Rudy Tomjanovich. Barbara Stevens, the Division II national, five-time Division II national, national, national coach of the year. Kim Mulkey, coach at Baylor. And now, about Kim Mulkey. The crazy lady. Oh, do not call She's her wild. crazy. She's Now, <laughs> I've had the privilege to see Baylor last year. Um, and just the intensity. That lady is. I just wild. love her. I don't know what it is. She's she fights wild. for her team. She knows her team inside and out. Like she knows what they're thinking. <laughs> she knows what, like they just make eye contact the, the coach and the player, and they just know what play they have to do. Uh -huh. And just watching Baylor throughout these years, I love that team. I love what she's doing. She deserves this. Um, good for her. Yeah, I remember watching the. It was a Final Four one year. I think they were playing UConn or Notre Dame, and mm -hmm. she was just going besides herself on the sideline every time her team would make yeah. a play. Like she was, like her reaction was as, as if she was on the court herself playing. Right. No, and I'm her just, reaction, but also like she'll walk up and down, all the way down <laughs> to see what exactly is happening. Because she's making sure if she has to make a call, she has yeah. to talk to the ref, like what's going on, making sure if she has to trade, you know, substitute anybody in and out. Yeah. It's, yeah, her yeah. coaching style was <laughs> it's wild. Like, I love it. I used when I watched it, I used to die because I'm like, yo, this lady is going wild on the bench. But <laughs> players like that. Players like that. You mm -hmm. see that as a coach. If I mean, you see that from a, as a, from a player's perspective. You see your coach with so much intensity that makes you want to play even harder. Intensity, energy. You get you. You see the energy. You're gonna give the energy, and yeah. you know, good for her. Yeah, I just want to know if they're gonna have a mute button for Kevin Garnett. Uh. When it's time for him to do his speech, that man, Kevin Garnett has no filter whatsoever. 
Lord knows what he's gonna say during his speech because they might they need a they're definitely gonna need a mute button for him. And also we gotta congratulate Mike Wilbon. Mm -hmm. He is the f recipient of the 2020 Kirk Gowdy Media Award for print journalism. Congratulations. Also Mike Breen, he's getting the Kirk Gowdy Media Award for electronics. Mm. Inside the NBA, the Kirk, Kirk Gowdy Transformative Media Award. Jim Gray, Kirk Gowdy Media Inside Award. Doctor and Dr. Tim Nugent for John W. Bunn Lifetime Achievement Award. Now I've got a chance. I've had a chance to meet Michael Wilbon on a few occasions, mm -hmm. and <laughs> he is he is a pretty he's a pretty nice guy, but he is really yeah. Mike Mike's wild, but uh, no, I mean Mike's he's he, amazing. He's an amazing man. Like like when he starts talking about something that he's passionate about, oh man, Mike. Mike will give it to you raw, uncut, unfiltered. Yeah, he'll just keep it real. Right. And, and I, you know, we've, we go to a convention, the National Association of Black Journalists, and we would always see Mike, you know, yeah. and he's always giving, caring, and he's yeah. always willing to help other journalists come up. Yeah, you got to get to him quick, though, because there's always a circle around him. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you don't talk to him, right. when, if you don't talk to him with, him with that millisecond when he's by himself, good luck, because once you blink your eyes, he's going to have a, he's going to hold court, and there's going to be at least 20, 30 people surrounding him. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to Mike Wilbon on that award. So. Uh, the Hall of Fame ceremony will take place this fall in Springfield, Mass. All right. Drama in Cleveland. So Cleveland Cavaliers and head coach John Beeline have agreed to part ways. And this is a shocker to nobody. Well, especially not me because, I mean, when you, <laughs> when you say thugs and think you were saying slugs and it's a little messy and yeah <laughs> and then your team is just they they already giving up on you it's this was never gonna work mm -hmm. this was not gonna work he it was he was set up to fail mm -hmm. pretty I mean, much he had a brief NBA career only 54 games and it, 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 he just did not have the setup to succeed in the NBA don't you love like we continue to see this headline of part ways yeah just say he got fired right <laughs> part ways he got fired i mean you got well what's what's this guy's name um what's their what's their owner's name oh gosh I'm trying to think I, I i forget the cast owner's name but he was out for a short for some time and he actually just got back mm. he's, he's got back and you know they let him go but there was just a whole lot of differences whole lot of differences plus beeline 67 these guys he's coaching, he's a whole bunch of young guys that he's coaching, and it's, you know, it can work in college, but in the NBA, it's, you know, the NBA is a players, it's a players league, right. and college is a coaches league, and I, I don't think he, uh, he transitioned very well. I mean, it's a tough break for him because he's actually a decent. He was not a bad college coach. I, he could have done, he could have done well in the NBA if he had the right position, but. One thing in the NBA, there's so many bad teams and bad organizations, and so many, it's it's a lot of a lot of coaches come in there and they 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 don't succeed and they're not put in position to succeed by management or ownership. So it's uh, it's huh. more than just the game. It's a lot of politics yeah. behind you know behind the game, and you have to understand that. And, you know, he originally was on a four-year contract that contained yeah. a team option for the fifth year, and it was yeah. worth around four million dollars. Yeah. Know. So tough break, John Beeline. Well, you still gonna get your money, so you can sit back and relax, go on vacation to sign, collect that check that the Cavs are gonna be giving you for. <laughs> for the next couple of years before you go back to college. So, hey, man, look out the bright side. And you get out of Cleveland. That's a <laughs> – that's heaven sent right there. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're going to go to Athletes Corner. We talked to St. Mary's boys basketball team. They had just played last night in the Spartan Classic, and they're playing again tonight in the championship game, which is at 7 p.m. So – Here's Athletes Corner, and then we're going to come back and then see whatever what we got left to talk about. Hello, welcome.
welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner. Today we got St. Mary's basketball. Joey, Josh, and Lee. What's going on, fellas? What's up, man? All right, they got they got the Spartan Classic they're getting ready for, and also state tournament coming up. Just finding out where they're gonna be seated. Busy times for you guys. So you know how you guys how you guys feeling right now? I think we're feeling pretty confident. Yeah. Yeah. How, how confident on a scale of one to ten? I wouldn't say too confident, but we're trying to push each, each other every day and get everyone better for the state tourney, which is a different animal. You obviously you never know what's going to happen in playoffs because last year we lost to a team that we weren't expected to lose to. Mm -hmm. uh, talk, talk to me about the season this far, you guys. Um, Nineteen and two. It's See? been up and down, but it's been fun. Like it's been a fun up and down where we lose, we lost two games, and we like just picked it up the next day at practice, and mm -hmm. everybody brought yeah. the energy. Yeah, yeah. it's been like that since trials. Is it kind of surreal for you guys? This is the last year you guys right, will be yeah. playing together. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, how was the mindset coming into the season for each of you guys knowing this is the last time you guys will play together? I think I think we just take it, you know, one practice at a time and just push each other as much as we can. Our coach works as hard, so you know we're ready when it comes to the games. When it comes to like it being the last season, you really got to be like, it's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. So exactly. that's the mindset I think us three as being the leaders of the team, show the young kids to bring. And I have to work hard every day because it's my last season ever playing basketball. So let's leave it all out there. All right, well, last season ever playing basketball? Why is that? I'm a baseball player. Oh, you're a baseball player. Gotcha, gotcha. You got the state champ. You got that state <laughs> ring. You want another one? Um, yeah, can you guys just talk? You, you guys said the last year you lost to a team that you guys weren't expected to lose to. Can you guys kind of take me through that? What, what went wrong and what did you guys learn from that game? We kind of looked past them because we're also the top three team in the state. We didn't have a player under six feet, so like we obviously expect that we're going to spank them and because they were a short team, didn't have a play over six feet, but right. we looked past and they got to us. So they, were, they were the 12th seed, you know, we kind of just like, really, oh, you know, they're not going to be as good. Mm -hmm. and came into the game and, you know, their coach was, was really good and, you know, they played a lot better than we expected them to. As a team, we lost each other when it was coming really down tied to the string because it was a close game for most of the game, yeah. but like when it got hard, we just gave up on each other and that's the difference between this year and last year. Yeah, that's one thing I find interesting about tournaments is you can be the best team, but one bad game, and it's over. like, it's, it's, it's a wrap. You don't get a seven-game series. Right. It's like you got right. to sit on it for the whole summer until yeah. next basketball season. But for you, Joey, you were really close to 1,000 points sure. for 40 points away. Yeah. Did, did you ever think you'd get to that? That you um, could, that was a goal of yours when you I mean, were yeah, coming to high school? Coming to the school, yeah, it was a goal of mine, but I never really thought it would be true, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, I think coming from North Andover and going into the system, it just it opened a lot more doors for me, mm -hmm. being able to you know play on the perimeter and you know find myself. Did they use you differently? Uh, yeah, same as yeah. Uh, uh, North Andover, I had to play in the paint the whole game. Like I was stuck down low, like and I was just like the second option when somebody drove to the basket. But you know now I was like a second or third option coming into the school, mm -hmm. and it was you know a lot better, and I fit in well. Josh, how were you able to adjust? You know, you guys had Jalen last year as one of the leaders on the team, but how were you able to adjust and taking on that role? It started off um, sophomore year where, like, I became a starter, and then that's brought me really more into, like, high up of the team, and then my junior year I became a captain. Mm -hmm. And having Jalen by my side and having some, like, Johnny Mercado, like a bunch of great guys to show me the right way of to lead a program and then Lee being there since my four years and Joey then coming in, it makes everything much easier and then we just push that positivity down to the young guys, which they give it back and right. it just connects right away when we're on the field. And you guys got a lot of success. You guys, you know, some, of your, some of the stuff you did as in your four years, guys won, what was it, three out of four city championships? Yeah. Three straight, is it three straight conference championships? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah talk, talk about those. Talk about those accomplishments that you guys. Um, that's not something you think about. like in the moment, but afterwards, like Coach Brown mentioned it to us, where like me and Lee, for our four years at least, I could say, we haven't lost to like Fenwick, which is our rival. Mm -hmm. Like, those type of things you don't think about in the four years until the end, like towards the end of your senior year, you're like, yeah. well, I really did all that like, really? as a team, and it's crazy. Yeah, that, that, hey, not a lot of people can, <laughs> can say they've got, gotten that accomplishment. Now, you guys got the Spartan Classic. Uh, tell, tell me about that. Tell me the competition. You guys play Cardinal Spelman tonight? Yeah, yeah. so that uh, Tonight, time. the game's playing t play Tuesday. Well, this is coming out Wednesday, so mm -hmm. by the time this comes out, the game will be <laughs> over, but yeah. for our audience. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they're one of, the, one of the top teams in our league, definitely, for the CCO. Um, them and Arlington Catholic are probably our two toughest matchups when we play. 
And it's usually a good game at the beginning. Uh, last time we played against them, we knew we had to like play with a lot of energy. Yeah. And we came out hot shooting, and everyone played well, and we came out with the win. Yeah, yeah now, Doug, how many days is the Spartan Classic? Is two, it? Two. Two. two days today, Tomorrow Tuesday tomorrow. and Wednesday? Yeah. Okay, okay. And Tomorrow's our senior night. Tomorrow, tomorrow's senior night? Yeah. yeah. I might be there. <laughs> so you guys schedule wise here, yeah, but um, yeah, senior night. That's who. Talk, but you guys already. You guys have thoughts of, you know, after. I mean, you guys are in the moment right now, but you know, looking ahead for colleges and stuff like that. Do you guys have a sense of where you guys are gonna go or have options yeah. on the table so far? Yes, yeah. sir. We have so, options. Yeah. Usually somewhere down south for me, so I can play baseball all the time. Okay. Get a ten too. <laughs> <laughs> For yourself? Um, I'm still up in the air about where I want to do, but I know what I want to study, and I want to play college basketball, which I've got interest from. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of just like coming down to where I want to go and where is the right fit for me. All right. Uh, can you guys at least talk about what Coach Brown has done for you guys as far as on and off the court, how he's helped you guys? Uh, he's done so much for all of us, and I, I'd say definitely for me personally, he's done so much for me, helping me with my family and stuff, and just like, you know, bringing me into a program where I, I didn't, I struggled at North Andover, and then coming here, like he really like believed in me, and he had, he he gave me the confidence that I needed to, you know, want to play basketball more, and just I had a lot of stuff going on with my family that you know he supported me, and everyone from St. Mary's did. Um, yeah. Coach Brown done for my four years has done so much where it's yelling at me, but like. It's, he told me one thing my freshman year at a banquet. He was like, if I ever stop yelling at you or anyone, it's because I don't care. And that hasn't stopped in the four years for me. And he's taught me so much things as becoming a better man that's more than just basketball. And the way he says, like, yes, we all love basketball, but it does come to an end, so what are you going to do in the future? Mm -hmm. So it's always about more and coming back and saying the same thing to the younger kids that he's bringing up. He's not just a coach to us, he's more like our father. He chooses all like his kids, helps us on and off the court, teaches us like how to do better in school, um, be a better person, just helps us all around. All right. For you, how is, uh, how is baseball and basketball, how does those, th those two things kind of relate for you? How does it help you? It helps me with my intensity. Mm -hmm. Because usually in basketball, I'm always talking, and baseball, I like carried on to baseball, and I'm always talking on the field and helping all my teammates. All right, hey, you guys going for another one? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, good, good, good task. Um, and, and lastly, you know, what should what should we all expect? So you guys got this two-day tournament, then going to wait for the news of where you guys are going to be seated. Right. So, you know, mindsets going into going into postseason play. Uh, I think one game at a time, definitely. Uh, we were looking ahead too much last year, and that kind of killed us. That, that really hurt us. We just, you know, looking past some teams that we shouldn't have looked past. Mm -hmm. And I think that we just got to, you know, attack the basket more and stuff in the playoffs just so we can, you know, get our flow going early. And also, it's a, t it's a collective bargain. So... Who are some of the some of the younger guys that you guys are gonna expect to pitch in during during this run? And also, who are some of the younger guys that people should watch out for when you guys are, when you guys are done and next season comes around? Uh, I think it's everyone in our younger class. Like yeah. they're a talented group. They really are. From the sophomore Henry to the junior Sammy, um, those two guys are in the starting lineups as sophomores and juniors, and they both can ball. Where they where the cool thing about our team this year is. You can guard us, but at the end of the day, Joe will give you 30 one day, and then Joey the next day will give you five, and then Lee has 20. Right. Like, it, you right. can not, never know the scouting reports like guard Joey, and then Henry will give you 20 that night. Like, right. it's so indecisive that it helps us. We have so many scorers on the team. Like, you, like one, of them's, one of them's having a bad game, the other, other four, other five will pick it up. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing I noticed when I came to a few of y'all games. There was... You guys did it in a variety of ways. There'd be games that you guys would do it from behind the three-point line, and right. then there'd be games you guys would just be the team going attacking the paint all the time. So you guys have a diverse way to attack yeah. a team's defense. And yeah. Our scoring balances out between like Ali, which is a junior, and he's a great shooter. So sophomore. Ali's a sophomore. Yeah. Sophomore. Sophomore junior. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have a freshman, two freshmen, which Derek and David. Brown, which they give us good minutes, mm -hmm. and they can play with us. Like the fact that you can throw them in there, them in there with a bunch of seniors, and they can like basically just fit in helps us right. a lot. Yeah, and David's a huge help, especially playmaker. He's such a good playmaker. He's so smart, you know, and he he hustles. Like he, I see him coming flying in for rebounds out of nowhere. You wouldn't even expect him to like jumping over everybody. All right. Cool, cool. And lastly, before we get out of here, guys, just plug in your social media for the people if they want to follow you guys before we get up out of here. 
I'm Alessandro.978 on everything. Josh Perez underscore 13. Joey B. Walsh, no spaces. <laughs> <laughs> All right, check them out. Spartan Classic. Wednesday is senior <laughs> night for them, so this is coming out Wednesday. So check them out Wednesday, senior night. We'll probably be there. So thank you, fellas, for coming. No you you know, you. Good luck in state tournament. And hopefully we get, back you, we get you guys back here with the trophy. Yes, sir. All right, you guys been watching Athletes Corner. We out of here. And we are back. All right. It's time for some NFL news. My Saints. Your Saints. My Saints. Your Saints. <laughs> they, ain't, they ain't getting younger at quarterback. They're getting older. They said we going to. Okay, don't not do that. We going we to bring back the old man for another year. <laughs> Why he be playing with me? Hey. I mean, the, the man just turned 41. Drew Brees announced okay. that he will be returning and to the he's Saints. he's shown that he, at 40, 41, he can still play at this level. Did you watch the playoffs? Okay. Did you see what happened in that second half? <laughs> or were we just all watching a different game? I it need was to a know. lot of different factors. Uh, We've already discussed this before. Yeah, like the fact that he could barely get the ball down the field. Okay. <laughs> I all mean, right. I, I, am I lying though? He had str he was struggling getting the ball down the field. I, I don't. Which is expected about. when you turn forty-one. Anyway, Drew Brees. Uh, Took to Instagram, you know, my feelings about the 2020 season. I look forward to the grind and the journey for the reward at the end will be worth it. I love you. Who that nation? Let's make another run at it. He might make a run to the nursing home. I don't know what run he's going to make. Cause I've been saying for years, Drew Brees, he's been, he's been going like this. They look great, but his play has been going like this. And the only reason he's getting all those yards is because Michael Michael Thomas can't run fast. He can't. He's not a deep threat. He's a possession receiver, so he gets in and gets yards after catch. But that's let me not bash Drew Brees. So with this signing, now they need to figure out what they're gonna do with Teddy Bridgewater. Mm. Are they gonna bring Teddy Bridgewater back, or are they gonna release him, trade him, get some value for him? Mm. Since the, or what are they gonna do with Taysom Hill? Because right. some people have it in their crazy mind that Taysom Hill's a future. He's a future starting quarterback in the NFL. I don't know how you are a future starting quarterback in the NFL at the age of 30. I don't <laughs> make that make sense for me. Sure. Yeah, please make that make sense. But there's a lot. There's a lot of. I have a lot of questions with the Saints. They have a lot of free agencies. They have a lot of things they need to address. Okay, they've taken care of their quarterback. Now they got a Alvin Kamara. Are they going to resign him? Or they better resign him. You know, they're going to some defensive players. Are they going to resign some of their defensive players? Because you know, this 41 year court, this this quarterback, he's he can't be the guy to lead you. You need pieces to make it work. And first, you need that running game. You, you need a, you need the running attack, and then you need the defense. So I mean, your, your Saints need to figure it out. They are. They will. I have no no doubt in my mind. You'll see. You sure? I'm You'll just I, I'm I'm just I'm just trying to let you know this well, Drew Brees is not the guy. It's not the guy that you get. If, you, if you're banking on him, leading you back to the Super Bowl after, what, this is going to go on 11 years, I don't, think it's, I don't think he's the guy for you. I don't think, I just don't think so. I think you need to look in a, well, you have him this year, but I think I you, need this, yeah, you need to look. You need to look somewhere else because uh, I, I still don't, I don't think you're winning a Super Bowl with him. It's rare to win a Super Bowl with a 40-year-old yeah. quarterback oh. unless – yeah, maybe. Unless it's Manning or Brady. That's it. Oh, only two 40-year-old quarterbacks that's won Super Bowls. Even your Brady. I'm stating facts. Manning and Brady are the only 40-year-old quarterbacks to win Super Bowls. And Brees. Joe Brees can't even get out the first round. Or, I'm sorry, he can't even win a home playoff game in the first round. Let's uh, let's just wait until the season starts, and then you can bash them all you want. I, I, well, the, 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 uh, I'm I'm saying I'm I'm just saying I'm saying I'm good for the Saints. You got your quarterback now. You can build around that, but y'all need to look a little more ahead of time because 
from what I saw in that playoff game against the Vikings, I, that, I mean, I have questions about that team. All right. And all right. And last NFL news, Antonio Brown is on this apology tour. So, <laughs> so, apology tour. So he's been apologizing. Notably, he apologized to Ben Roethlisberger and saying he, 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 t he took for granted how good he had it. I think he po apologized to Mike Tomlin, basically apologizing to the Steelers or, yeah, organization. And some people think it's sincere, but some people think this is a guy trying to, trying to, <laughs> trying to do damage control of some of the things he's done and trying to get get back in the league. And it could be all of the above. It could. It could be. Um, you know, one of the one of the tweets he said these guys gave me an opportunity when I was 21 years old, and I'm forever grateful for those guys. Um, got the opportunity to not only play for those guys, but to be in so many amazing moments. We've been through so much. I'm forever grateful and indebted to the Steelers organization. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, he burned some bridges with with his antics and some some of the stuff he was saying. I, there's no, there's no coming back from that. I mean, yeah. me personally, if I was like a coach, I'd be like, all right, you could kick rocks, forget you and your apology. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. But he, he wants to get back in the league. But there's still circumstances surrounding. Will he? What would the league do? Because they're still, they're still investigating. Mm -hmm. I, how long, how long do you gotta investigate something? Yeah, this has been going on since what, like <laughs> September? Yeah, it's been going on since. It's been a minute. It's been going on for a while. I think still? That's too. That's why he added when I just read about 21 years old and trying to show that he came into the league young, still under you know learning and I don't know just wait, to highlight. Wait 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 wait. He he's talking about he came into the league. Yeah okay. Uh, he's trying to blame it on immaturity. Listen, I don't know what, but I. You weren't, you weren't, you weren't doing all these crazy things and saying all these crazy stuff when you were 21. You was doing this all last year, and you were right. starting. Right. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know why he just said gave me an opportunity when I was 21 years old. Try, I guess he's maybe trying to uh -oh. live in the past. Uh, okay. I mean, I guess. Yeah, you got the opportunity, but you had it. Yeah, he was. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And so there's, he he still will add value to a team. Because he still has the skills. He took a year off. Mm -hmm. That does wonders for an NFL player not playing, not getting hit for a year off. Somebody will sign him. I'm sure this team's still interested Definitely. to sign him. But when you sign him, will he be on the field? Because there's still this lingering thing with the NFL that I'm still trying to figure out why they haven't even. Investigating. No, I, why, why haven't they. Come to a conclusion. At all. It's like, what are y'all doing? Does, uh, what? I mean, how long did it take? How long? Did, I mean, what, what year did they suspend Brady for Spygate? Oh. Like 2016, 20, yeah, the 2016. Yeah. yeah. Minute. And Spygate happened. Spygate. Sp Spygate. I got to do these air quotes. Spygate it happened, what, 2014? And it was, I mean, they, they threw more resources at that. Than they right. And it all depends of where does that line up into their every daily um, you know, routine, what do they need to handle first, what trading, what, who, who's saying this, who's saying that, how much money do they really want to throw at this. The only if they thing, want to get it done, yeah. they, they can get it done by next week. But they they're really choosing could. to just leave it lingering and in, in, in limbo. Yeah, Antonio Brown's just lucky he ain't a Patriot no more because if he was, oh boy, he would have. they would have thrown the book at him if, <laughs> if he was still a Patriot. All right, uh, lastly, on the NFL news, Panthers signed – not Panthers. Seahawks signed Greg Olson to a one-year, $7 million deal. The Redskins, the team in Washington, are exercising Adrian Peterson's 20, 2020 option. So he'll be back with the team. So mm -hmm. big moves for them. And then Jason went in the Dallas Cowboys, says he wants to play in, in 2020, but he's looking – has all options open. He needs to he needs to hang it up. Making some moves. Yeah, he needs to hang it up. <laughs> all right, the Houston Astros, I mean, Major League Baseball, players, commission, they've been coming hard at the Houston Astros for this scandal. I mean, players I players around the league on. have voiced their opinions, and the commissioner just says nobody should throw the ball at them. There'll be punishment for any team that targets them. Even basketball players have been saying, talking about this too. 
Yeah, LeBron talking about he he don't condone cheating. I mean, but one time he's. Let me let me let me not let me not let me me not. I don't want the LeBron hive to come at me. (laughs) But yeah, everybody's been saying it, and I'm just like, woo! It's gonna be a long season for the Astros, and they have to sit have to sit there and take it. You got guys calling them cowards, and Mm -hmm. that they should be everything should be stripped down. But man, this is lost respect. That was another. I'll say this. This might have been the greatest thing to happen to baseball since steroids. Because we're talking about it. How often do we talk about baseball, spring training and all that before, you know, how often do you talk about that? Right. Not often, yeah. unless, you know, you're really diehard and invested in it. Mm-hmm. But it, it's and, rare. You know, that's always been a problem. We look at the NFL. We look at the NBA. These are two organizations that we always have put at the forefront. Yep. And not having these conversations, these conversations that need to be in rooms that are, that it is happening. So, yeah, you're right. Maybe this scandal is allowing to put the MLB at the forefront, even though it's a scandal and it's yeah. not the best and the best in the highlight, but any publicity is good publicity, right? All right. And so, I mean, the yeah, it's gonna be a long season for the Astros. They're gonna be there's a lot of people that's gonna be coming at them. You know, you know. I still think I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't, I, I don't care. You stole, you stole signs. Okay, whatever. You did it. It happened. Well, I mean. Get better signs or something, or find. I mean, mm-hmm. you still gotta hit the ball. That's my whole thing about this whole stealing sign stuff. I know what's coming. I still have to be able to hit it. It, it don't matter if I know you're throwing a fastball, curveball. I still have to hit the hit the hit the ball. So I mean, whatever. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. That's the model. Um, all right, boxing. You a big boxing fan? Yeah. yeah, yeah, same, same. So we got <laughs> we got part two of Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury happening this Saturday. You know, a lot of people, the the experts or the you know the guys who follow this are going with Wilder in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. And of uh, course, some the gambling community yeah, is yeah, putting yeah. some big money on this match yeah and and i just don't want it to end in a draw like last time or a decision or whatever however way ended it because i a lot of people thought wilder won with especially with the knockout i mean fury is a pretty good fighter but honestly nobody cares about this fight everybody just want wilder to win so it could set up the wilder versus anthony joshua fight that baseball i said baseball boxing has been anticipating has been waiting for once that is that is the big money fight i mean this one's gonna make money too but the big money fight is wilder versus joshua and wilder just need to handle his business and get this one out the way so right pedro that's right all right yeah pedro's our resident expert on boxing he knows everything boxing so yeah so the fight goes down this saturday that's all i got for this one uh i think i'm going with wilder Uh, yeah i'm going with wilder because same yeah because fury looks like he drinks a lot so (laughs) he does um all star game top 10 plays check these out are back all right get some high school basketball highlights first we are going to look at lynn english versus cambridge which took place on sunday it was lynn english's last home game of the season they won it they finished off 18 and 2 so check out these highlights
All right, and we are back in some. Oh, let me fix this. <laughs> All right, some other high school scores from yesterday. Lynn Classical fell to Everett, sixty-four to eighty-four. St. Mary's, the Spartans Classic, is going on. They are playing in the championship game today. They beat Cardinal Spellman 59-53 last night. So the championship game is tonight at 7 p.m. If you are free, go over there, check those out, support those kids. And you can find the highlights of the Everett Classical game on the After the Whistle Instagram page, which is LCTV After the Whistle, and also the highlights of the St. Mary's game from last night will be on LCTV after the whistle Instagram page. So go follow LCTV after the whistle for those highlights. And that's about it. We we got through it. We got through it. She you know, she over there complaining her back hurt and so and stuff like that. Grandma mode. Grandma mode. She on that. On me. She on there. Grandma mode. We we out of here, man. We'll catch you guys next week. Todd will be back next week. Hopefully her back will be fine next week. And, you know, have a great weekend, everybody.